Namaste. Thank you so much for being here with us in our virtual Yoga Fish online studio. I'm really glad you could take some time for yourself. I know how hard it is to find time or to make time to actively rest. So often we feel like if we're not busy doing or producing or actively making something happen, we feel like our time is being wasted in some way. And while we have been raised perhaps in this culture that really values busyness, as we start to age, we might find that if we don't make time for rest, our bodies are going to force us to rest. So we can't always be doing, we can't always be rushing and trying to make things happen or we get run down, we get worn out. So our practice today will be really quiet, really calm. It's going to give you an opportunity to be at ease as best you can with your body in this moment. While we can't always create optimal circumstances in our homes for rest, I have two small dogs and if I'm trying to do a restorative practice at home, they will bark. <laughs> There's no, no two ways about it. What we can do is just create the best sort of cocoon we can for ourselves. Maybe we find a room by ourselves. All you need is room for a mat. And then for today's practice, if you can have two blocks and one blanket, that's the bare minimum. If you have access to a bolster, even better, or you can take your blanket and maybe put another blanket on top of it or your blanket on top of two blocks. So you can be as creative as you want to be with this. Anything in your house is potentially a prop. That's, what, that's how I do at home sometimes. So to get started today, we'll come to lie down on our backs. Now, as you come to lie down, I really want this to be an opportunity to be comfortable and to be at ease. So if lying flat on your back does not feel great in your body, as it doesn't for a lot of us, then you may find that you prefer to have your knees bent. And if you prefer to have your knees bent, it might feel good to put something under your knees. If you have a bolster, that's great. But you can also take two blocks stack them by each other and a folded blanket on top of them makes a really nice sort of bolster substitute. If you find that it would feel good in your body to have something under your head, especially if you feel like your chin is higher than your forehead, then you would probably benefit from putting a little pillow under there, but we want to be sure it's not too high. And then to begin, if it feels okay, close your eyes and bring your hands to rest on your belly. Now, if you fall asleep during this practice, I think that's just fine. If you fall asleep, it's because your body needed you to sleep and you created some good conditions for rest. Otherwise, as we stay here for a little while, I'd like to direct you to feeling your belly move as you breathe. Now, the fingers lightly resting on the low abdomen. Can you begin to notice the natural rise and fall of your breath? So we don't need to try to make it happen. Just like babies know how to breathe. We remember how to breathe. We don't need to breathe in any special way. See if you can just let the breath come and go through your nose.
and feel how the belly rises and falls. As you continue to experience the rise and the fall of the breath, how the hands naturally lift and lower as the belly does. Without trying to change anything else in your body, can you notice the sensation of the air on your skin? Can you feel all of the places where the back of your body is in contact with something under it? So right now I feel the back of my head, my shoulders, my two upper arms, and back, and the backs of my legs resting on the blocks with the blanket. And the two heels resting on the floor. Bring your awareness back to your breath and see if you can notice if it's changed at all or not. Now see if you can bring your fingers to the sides of your waist. This is always a little harder to negotiate in my body. But now I'm resting just fingertips on the side waist. And I want to encourage you or invite you to see, can you feel the expansion at the side waist as you breathe in? Can you feel that you're breathing wide? While we're breathing wide into our fingertips here at the low waist, just that space between the side of the ribs and the top of the hips. See if you can notice where your tongue is resting in your mouth. And invite the tip of your tongue to rest not against your top teeth, but on the little spot behind it. There's a little ridge you can feel on the upper palate of your mouth. Just a little bit behind the top teeth, let the tip of your tongue rest there. And see if you can notice if that has any effect on your jaw or neck. And now take one or both hands and rest it under your lower back. So I just snuck around the side of my waist and came down behind my back. And this is the hardest place of all to feel the breath. But if we imagine our lower abdomen as a balloon As you breathe in, can you feel that balloon of your abdomen inflating belly, sides, and now into your hands at the lower back? If it feels good to keep your hands there, you're welcome to. Or now you can allow your hands to rest anywhere else. See if you can continue to observe the expansion, belly, 
sideways, lower back as you breathe without that feedback on the fingertips now. Feeling at the same time, body supported by the earth. Air on the skin. Now, if you like, you might begin to set an intention for your time on your mat today. How do you want to take care of yourself? What do you need from this time so that you feel more nourished or supported For your body or for your spirit or your soul or your mind take a moment or two to breathe your intention through your body if you'd like to bring the hands to heart center palms might touch for anjali mudra or one hand on top of another at the space of the heart, or just one hand on the heart and one hand on your abdomen. Let's begin to step your feet in toward you a little bit. If you do have something under your knees, just quietly or gently move that out of the way, maybe with your foot. If you need to sit up and rearrange, that's fine. And then take a moment or two to stretch. Maybe the arms extend, or maybe it feels good to hug your knees to your chest, rock around a time or two. And then knees bent, soles of the feet to the floor. Walk your feet a little wider, keeping the knees bent. And let's find a little gentle movement through the hips. Rock your knees left and right, windshield wiper. If you'd like to reach your arms out to the sides, you could do that if you have the space. And as your knees go to one side, if you'd like, the head might drop to the other. And then bring the knees back to your starting position. Take both hands up into the air so you can see them if your eyes are open. And let's circle the wrists a few times. Just a little movement there. There have been times in my life where I sat or laid down to do a restorative practice and then the teacher asked me to do something like move my wrists and I was, I literally felt like I am too tired to do that. If that's you today, then just rest. If it feels good to have a little movement here, open and close your hands a few times. Spread the fingers wide, make a fist. Spread the fingers wide, make a fist. Good. And then we'll settle into our next shape. Keep your right leg bent, but straighten your left leg, please. And then walk the right foot over so that the right foot is against the left leg and drop your right knee out to the right. So it's like we're doing tree pose, but we're lying down. And you may find that you need or want a little support under your right knee. How do 
you know if you should put something under the knee or not? Well, that's really personal, of course. But if you find as your knee drops off to the side that you feel a lot of sensation, whether it's in the knee itself or in the right hip or the inner thigh, then I would really give that leg something to rest onto so that it is a completely supported experience. Try both ways and see what you notice. Then your left arm, so your opposite arm, comes into a cactus shape on the left side of your body. So I've got my left arm out to the left like a goalpost. I'm going to sit up and show you what I mean by that in case that's confusing. It's out to the side like this, and then my right leg is in a tree pose shape with the right knee bent. Some of you will find that as you take your left arm into this cactus shape, your left hand or the left arm doesn't rest on the floor completely. That's not a problem if you have that experience, but what I would do if you're experiencing that, what I would do is to place something onto the left hand so that the arm has something to rest onto. Just as with the leg, we want to be sure that we can really feel how supported we are. And as you do that, your body will start to trust that this is an okay place, this is an okay range of motion, and it'll let you relax more. See if you can feel again all the places where your body is supported. And if it would feel nice to you to cover your eyes with something, if you have an eye pillow or even just a folded washcloth or something, sometimes a little pleasant heaviness across the eyes can feel really soothing here. With your right arm, you can have that in any position at all, not trying to do anything special, just letting it relax. See what you can notice while we stay here for just another moment or two. To begin to move out of this position, let's start by bringing the left arm into a different shape that feels good to you. So I just brought my left hand to rest on my left ribs. Pause and feel that, feel your left shoulder. And then begin to bring your right knee toward the ceiling so that your left leg is still straight the right foot is on the floor and the right knee points up. We're moving into a twist. Press your right foot into the floor and move your hips to the right and then carry your right leg over to the left, keeping the right knee bent. Now, for most bodies, your right knee will be in the air and the left, excuse me, your right shoulder might be down or you might have your knee down, but your shoulder is in the air, or maybe everything's in the air. It's okay. Here too, just as in the other pose, it can be really helpful to give your knee something to rest onto. So if you have a bolster or a block or a couple of blocks or a blanket, see if you would like to add some support under the right knee. And then I'm going to suggest that you try to keep the right shoulder supported too. So if the right shoulder is in the air, maybe something under that, or 
maybe leaning back to the right a little so that you're feeling more steady in the right shoulder. In some bodies, you may feel like, I am just not going very far here and it's not restful at all. If that's the case for you, then rather than keeping your left leg straight, you may prefer to have both knees bent. That might feel more restful or supported to you. So just know that it's okay to make any adjustment or find a different shape that works better for you. If you like, you could reach the right arm out to the right. Or now with your right arm, you could make that cactus shape here or stretch the right arm up by the right ear or kind of coil it around your head. And then we'll stay here for a little while. Sometimes here it's helpful or it feels soothing to place something across the top of the right hip, like a folded blanket. So I can show that to you if you like. So I've just put a folded blanket on top of my right thigh, which helps to add a little weight to encourage the leg to stay comfortably in place, but also has a, for me, a psychological benefit that, that heaviness makes me feel a little more supported or cocooned or anchored. And that feels nice to me in my body. You can see what you'd like here. Notice again, the places where you are supported. and whether or not there's anything that you can do to feel more supported or more restful. In this last moment or two before we start to make a transition. See if you can notice the breath in the body again. And then when you feel ready, you can move any props that you need to out of the way and come to lie back down on your back in your starting position. Now we've just done two sort of uneven things. So the two sides of your body might feel a little different and that might not feel quite right. So maybe there's a little movement that would feel nice here. Maybe there's something your body's kind of asking for. Or maybe it feels good just to be noticing and resting. Take a moment or two. See if you can return to that three-dimensional, low, deep, wide breath, belly. Sideways, lower back. When you feel ready, right leg straight, left knee out to the left. So I've got tree pose now on the second side in my lower body. And then right arm in my cactus position. And 
And then my experience in my body here is simply to notice. So for me, I'm feeling where there's a mild tug of some muscles or the fascia, the tissue around the muscles. And I don't need to write a story about it. I don't need to explain it away. I'm just noticing. I can feel my body breathe. And if in your body you feel an impulse to move a little bit into something else, then please feel free to um, to freestyle a little bit here. And find whatever inner wisdom is directing you toward. If you rest the tip of your tongue on that spot, maybe just half an inch behind the top of the, behind the top teeth. Notice if that has an effect in the top of the throat on the rhythm of your breath. Last moment or two before we shift. And then first move your right arm. If it's asking for a little release or stretch, we could do that. And then invite the sole of your left foot back to the floor. Press your left foot into the floor and carry your hips toward the left side of your mat. Then invite right knee across the body. You may certainly have the experience in your body as I do of your two sides being really different today. See if you want anything under a knee or under a shoulder. And you can look in whatever direction feels best for your neck today. And then we can get a little quiet with ourselves again if you like. As you continue to breathe, maybe you find some small micro adjustments or maybe some spontaneous wisdom comes to you about what might feel nice here. If there is something that happens in your home while you're practicing, like if there's a noise outside or, or a dog barks or your phone rings or something like that, it's okay that your practice isn't perfect today. 
happens to all of us, but what I want you to notice is what do you experience in your body when you have a distraction like that? If you can notice anything, what does that feel like? And then in the more quieter moments, what, if anything, do you feel in your body then? How is that? Okay. Begin to move now by taking your left arm and let's lay it across the left side of the body. So left hand toward your left hip. And then if you have any props under your knees, take them out of the way and we'll curl up on your right side. If you want a little pillow for your head with your arm or a blanket, add that for yourself. And then in your own time, let's make our way to a hands and knees position. You may find in your body that you'd like some support under your knees, so you could add a little cushion there with a blanket or whatever you have. If it feels okay to have your hands under your shoulders, you can put them there or you can walk your hands a little forward so that your shoulders are behind them. If you can't have your hands comfortably on the floor for any reason, put a block under each elbow. And then we'll move through a few rounds of cat and cow. So if I were to do that with my elbows on blocks, that would look like this. Or on my hands. For cat and cow, as you inhale, let your belly drop. As you exhale, curl your spine like a Halloween cat. Now, you may find that there's some other movement your body's looking for here. If you want to stay with cat and cow, we could do that. Or maybe it feels good to you to move your hips in a big circle. So I take my hips over to the right, toward the back of the mat, my hips go back. Hips go to the left and hips move forward. You could be moving more slowly or more quickly, whatever you like. And then if you're circling, be sure to go both ways. And finally, we'll come back to our child's pose. Now, as you take your hips towards your heels, there's no reason you should expect this to be comfortable for you. Not everybody finds comfort in child's pose. So a couple of things just to run through briefly. If you're feeling a pinch at the front of your hip when you come into child's pose, you can put a blanket there to rest over. If your hips don't come comfortably to your heels, we can put something there to rest on. If your forehead doesn't come comfortably to the ground, you can rest your forehead on your arms or on a block or a bolster so that you have something to rest into. 
If it doesn't feel good no matter what you do, you might try taking a seat and resting and breathing for a few moments. Or you can sit with the knees bent and the feet in front of you and round your spine like this. So I'm curling forward. Looks like this from the side. And then if I'm doing this, I like to lean a little side to side for a little rocking motion. That feels nice to me. Take a few breaths, whatever your child's pose looks like. And in just a moment, we'll start to make a shift to a different shape. Okay. Walking your hands in. Come to sit for a moment. Any shape that feels good for you. And let's set up for a wide-legged forward fold. Many of us find that our heels don't feel comfortable when they're on a hard surface. So you may need to move back so that you can get your heel onto the mat. You may need to sit on something. So perhaps a blanket under the hips. And it doesn't matter how wide your legs are. This should be something that feels pretty good to you. Before we go anywhere, before we try to lean forward, let's lean a little side to side or start to find a circle. Taking the legs wide for some of us will feel comfortable and for others of us it won't. If you have a wall handy, you need a wide wall maybe, you might lie down and take your legs up the wall instead and let the legs fall apart from one another. For some of us, that's gonna feel better. Let's circle the other direction. Or it's okay to sit up pretty tall here and not to worry about leaning forward. Now, you can continue to move. You can stay more upright and simply rest. Leaning against a wall might feel really good here too, with the legs a little bit wide. If you find that you have room in your body to lean forward here, as you start to lean forward, you might want to rest onto something. So we could take our forearms or elbows onto a bolster or onto blocks, if you have those things. And it would also be good, if you don't go very low, that's fine. We can rest the elbows on something and then rest the head in the hands. The more you can give your body to rest into, the more your body can soften and feel supported and not have to worry about holding you upright. One of my favorite variations, a friend of mine, she may have invented this, Carol D, who teaches at Yoga Fest. You take the bolster on the long edge and simply rest your head onto it. So this feels nice for her and her body. It is really soothing to, for me too, to have my forehead resting on something. So those are just some options to work with. But now I'm going to let you drop in. I'm sure you're already in the pose, but I'm going to give you a little time and a little quiet space to experience yourself here.
And in all of these poses, after we've been in them for a little while, you'll perhaps notice that your experience has started to change. And it'll feel good to you to maybe change your setup to relax a little bit more into the pose. Or you may find that you need to change some things because you're feeling too much sensation. If you're feeling any pulling behind the knees, then it's fine to bend your knees or to rest something under each knee, a block or a blanket. I'm being a little minimalist with the props here because I know we don't all have a studio full of stuff at home to use. Like I'm very lucky to have all of these things here and I'm aware of that. So sometimes we need to create our restorative experience at home in a little bit more of a Spartan way. That's okay. And if you have the props, by all means, use them. In the last moment or two, one more time, just going to invite you to notice what you're experiencing. and how it feels and whether or not it might be nice to stay longer here or if there's something different you would do next time. And then please take your time to walk your way back up. I like to use my hands to help my legs in. We were there for pretty long. And then if it feels good to massage around the legs, you can do that or any movement at all that would feel good. Maybe a little windshield wiper here. I'm going to shift gears a little bit now and come into a supported Ardha Chandrasana. Many people like to use a bolster for this one, and I'll, I'll show you how that would work, but I'm going to show you also with two blankets, which works really well if you have a smaller frame. I'm pretty, pretty short from here to here. So, in a standing Ardha Chandrasana side body stretch, we'd be pulling the arm up and over like this. We're going to mimic that same thing here. Let's start on your right side. I've taken my blanket, I keep them folded in this shape, I think most, most of us do, and then I've just folded it into kind of a third here, or sort of rolled it up into a light tube. You want to make sure anytime you're working with a blanket that's going to be supporting you in your practice, that there aren't any wrinkles in it and that it feels smooth and consistent and supportive. As I come to lie down, my right hip is on the floor and I want this blanket to hit me on my torso between my hip and my ribs. My right shoulder should be able to come comfortably to the floor and then I'm taking my right arm in front of me and I've added a pillow under my head. With my left arm, my top arm, I'm stretching up over the ear. And now I'm stretching into my side body here. If this doesn't feel like it's enough, you may need to add a little more support under the ribs, under the body. So I'm going to try a bolster for myself and see how that feels today. Depending on the bolster, Sometimes I can't get my shoulder all the way to the floor. This is sort of right on that borderline for me. But right now my shoulder's on the floor, my right hip is on the floor, 
and my left arm can stretch over my ear. Now, if there's any pain in your top shoulder as you reach your arm up over the ear, then rather than having the arm here, you could rest it anywhere you like. Some people like to tuck it behind the back, so they stretch into internal rotation here. That's a nice way to do it. Take a moment or two to feel, to check it out and to see, does my, is my hip resting on the floor? Is my shoulder resting on the floor? Does my neck feel okay? Is the pillow under my head high enough? Or would it feel better for me to take my bottom arm and rest my head on that? Some people like that way. I don't. So I'm doing it this way. Now, little work with the legs. The most sort of cozy setup here is to have your knees stacked one on top of another. But for me and my body, I like to keep my right knee, my bottom knee bent, and then just to start to straighten the left leg until I feel a little bit of sensation of getting longer through my top leg and my top arm. I want to be really sure that I'm not feeling so much that I can't rest. And if you're going through a time in your life where you really need rest, for example, if you've been really ill or you feel like I can't handle one more thing in my life today, then I would make this just as supported and cozy as I could. And I would even, if I could find another blanket that was easy to use in my house, I would put a blanket over my whole body here. But if it feels like to you today, like I want a little pleasant something, something happening, then you might start to straighten that top leg and walk it back a little bit away from your bottom leg. Now, one of the challenges for a lot of us will be to allow the abdomen to soften here. So see if you can just let go of any tension. If it feels okay, let go of any tension in the low belly and invite a little softening there. And then as we stay here for just a little while longer, see if your body could feel a little heavier. And notice if you've been trying to get anywhere and see if you can just let yourself be where you are. Last moment or two here before we move on. And 
and then begin to find your way. Before we come to the second side, it might feel good to gently press your way up to a seat. Kind of bringing the knees in a little. I press down into the floor and push up. And then you could sit against the bolster or on the bolster. And there's always um, some people that really love this and want to come back over the bolster. Great, if that feels good to you, enjoy it. But for me, I'm preferring right now just to sit for a moment. You can keep your eyes closed if you want, let it be really quiet. And then no rush at all. We just turn. Bring your other hip against your bolster or your blanket and make your way to lie down on the second side. Remember how different your two sides are. And if you find that you need something different on one side than you do on another, that's not a problem. We just want to take care of that. In some ways, your left side and your right side have led very different lives, haven't they? So we need to be sure that we're allowing for different needs. Now remember, you have so many options, and if it feels like it's not quite right here on this side, like the bolster is too puffy, try something lower, or maybe you need something higher. You could have your knees comfortably stacked, one on top of another, or you could have the bottom leg bent and the top leg straighter as you walk it back in the way. If the right arm feels uncomfortable stretching up over the ear, just make a different choice. Rest it alongside the body or bring it behind your back into internal rotation. And one of my favorite ways to work here now is to ask myself, what keeps me from relaxing more? And sometimes it's something physical in my body, like I find I've inadvertently tried to go for a stretch and so my body can't relax. Sometimes there's something on my mind that keeps me from relaxing. And then often just by bringing my awareness to that thing, I can say, oh, yeah, that's on my mind. And then I can set it aside because it's been asking for my attention and I acknowledged it, then it might be a little quieter, it might give me a little break. If you find that you have that little voice in your head that feels like well, we should be doing something, please remember that we have to offset the doing times in our life with the being times in our life. So just like the breath gives and takes, we need to give and take in our own life too. There are times where we need to be more active and times where the body needs to replenish its resources. And if we've had to fall away from that natural rhythm of give and take, of do and rest, and we've been forced into doing, or the body just is in a stage where it needs more rest, then the very best thing we can do is to give it that rest. See if you can allow the body to feel a little heavier.
okay. In these last few moments, awareness of your breath. What is it that you notice? And what is it that you need? When you feel ready, let's begin by bringing right arm down by the side or in front of you. Press one hand or both hands into your mat. Come all the way back up. Find a place to rest that feels okay to you so that we can just pause and feel and experience you and your body as you are right now. Okay, before we move on, let's come to a comfortable seat again. And I'm just going to add a blanket under my hips. And then I've got my legs crossed, but you can sit in whatever way feels right for you. Let's take a few moments to move the neck. Let your shoulder blades drop down the back. Drop your chin toward the chest. Bring your chin over to your right collarbone and then your right ear to your right shoulder and then chin in a semicircle across the sky. Make sure that nothing hurts. Ear to shoulder and then chin to your upper collarbone and back around through to center. So we're moving in a pain-free range of motion Just being mindful, and of course, if you have anything going on with your neck, or if you're at all unsure about the movement, then please don't do it. Next time you bring your chin toward your chest, we'll go in the opposite direction. Last time around, we'll finish up this circle. And then back through to center, lift your gaze. Let's lift both shoulder blades toward the ears. Draw your shoulder blades together, keep them together, draw them down your back. Shoulder blades apart, up, together, down, apart, up, together and down. Now, together, up, apart, down, together, up, apart, and down. One more on your own. And then let your hands rest naturally on your legs. Let your breath move naturally in your body. And we'll begin to make our way into some of our last poses together. 
So, you'll want to have either a bolster or you'll take your blanket and fold it into thirds. One, two folds. And then whatever you're working with, that's going to come to be lengthwise on your mat. We'll start with your right hip resting against the bolster or your blanket. And again, you can use whatever you have here. And I've just got my knees kind of resting on top of one another. In a moment, I'm going to turn my body and fold over my bolster. And if I find that it feels like, wow, that's a long way down, you can give yourself a little support with a couple of blocks. So I just put one block on the high setting and one block on the medium setting. So that as I come down, I'm supported. Now that's too high for me. So I'm going to take them both down one. And then that would feel a little better to me, but I actually like it all the way on the floor. We're not going to be here for very long. This is just a little bit of an echo of some of the work we did earlier. But if you needed to stay longer, you certainly could. As you come down, if you feel like your chest is uncomfortable, it's kind of squishing into the bolster, that can happen for a lot of us. What you may need to do is just rest the side of your body on the bolster, or you may need to take the flesh and kind of move it a little bit so that it's not feeling so squishy. See what feels good for you. It's okay to move your body. And then one other thing to take note of here is that sometimes if you have your bolster elevated, one elbow doesn't rest on the floor comfortably. So if my elbow were not on the floor, I would put a blanket or something under it so that it has something to rest onto. And then we're just here for a little while breathing. If you wanted to work a little bit more with a stretch, you might sneak your left arm forward and I like to think here of like a cat stretching in the sun. And then settle in. Last moment here on the side. And then to come out, walk your hands back onto your shoulders, press into your mat and come up. We'll turn. Bring your other hip against your bolster. So right up against it there. One hand to the outside and the other hand on the inside. And then come out over wherever feels right for you. Sometimes people ask, where should my head be? Where am I looking? And the answer is really what feels best for you. So if in your body it feels good to turn your head so that you're looking away from your knees, then that's fine. And for a lot of folks, they find that it's less, um, less work.
to look in the same direction that your knees are facing. So not twisting the neck. There's nothing wrong with turning your head and with, with twisting your neck. Your neck is designed to turn. Otherwise, we'd have a really hard time seeing anything or driving. You want to explore that stretch for the right arm here. It reaches away. And then let yourself settle a little bit and see if you can invite yourself to feel a little softer or a little heavier or just a little more at ease in this moment. Many people find they would like something between their knees here, so that's a nice thing. And then just one last note, if you feel like your outer hip is super bony on the floor and it doesn't feel good, you may need a little extra cushion under your left hip here. So that that's always worth taking some time to set up for yourself because you don't wanna to try to rest through pain if you don't have to. Stay here for a few more breaths. Okay, take your time, go easy, walk yourself back up. And then we'll get ready for our last pose, a supported Shavasana, supported resting pose. So for this one, I'm going to use my folded blanket under my back. Depending on your body and what feels good to you, you may need to fold this blanket just in half, which would look like this. Or you may prefer a little more height. So I'll try that. I folded it into thirds again, and now I've got this lined up against my back. If I find I need a little something under my head, I'll add that too. And then if you have two blocks and a bolster, we're going to go super deluxe today in our resting pose. I put two blocks down and my bolster on top. And then I'm going to scoot forward so that my knees, the pits of my knees are resting right here on top. Then I'll come back over my mini bolster blanket here. And I'm just tucking the end under a little so I make a little neck roll. What we want to find for ourselves is something that feels like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. If you're just feeling like it's okay, please don't settle for just okay. Make yourself as comfortable as you can in your body today. Take the time you need to really set yourself up. And if this option doesn't feel good for you, then you can always do a traditional Shavasana, arms and legs outstretched, maybe just a blanket or a bolster under the knees. Or you can always close your practice with seated meditation, especially if you feel like you got a lot of good rest today. And then wherever you are, See if you can come back to that feeling of that three-dimensional breath. Mm -hmm. 
Rest the tip of your tongue on the spot behind your teeth. That little ridge, not against the teeth, but a little behind that. Ideally, what we would love in our Shavasana is just to drift off or to be really aware and restful at the same time. But if you find that your mind is still really busy, I want you to know that there's still benefit to being quiet and resting, even if it feels like, I wish this were more restful. Simply creating the conditions for ourselves to rest a little bit more. We shut down some of the input that we take in so naturally now as part of our lives. We give ourselves the opportunity to heal, restore, rejuvenate. even if we feel like, oh, I should be doing something else. This is truly beneficial time. Okay. When you're ready to start waking up, you might begin by wiggling your toes, moving your fingers or your wrists. And then roll over to whichever side feels good for you. And we'll come back to that seat again. One more moment here just to notice your breath. Just to notice the overall feeling of the body, if you can. To remember your intention. And to trust that we did really good work for ourselves today. I'm going to close just briefly. One more little note. This is David White, Consolations. He says, Rested. We are ready for the world, but not held hostage by it. Rested, we care again for the right things and the right people in the right way. In rest, we reestablish the goals that make us more generous, more courageous, more of an invitation, someone we want to remember, and someone others would want to remember too. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking care of yourself. Be well.